Coming up on today's Airborne, the Robinson R66 receives EASA certification. iFight Planner for iPad version 2.1 is cleared as filed. And Boeing hangs its future on the 7879 777X and 737 Max. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Four years after initial FAA certification, EASA has issued its type certificate for the Robinson R66 turbine helicopter. Tom Patton is here to report. EASA certification marks an important milestone for Robinson, as two thirds of the company's sales have historically come from foreign customers. With certification finally in place, Robinson says it can deliver its current backlog of European orders and focus on strengthening its presence in the European market. Currently, there are 16 R66 service centers, of which 13 are dealers approved in Europe. More than 50 countries have certified the helicopter. To date, Robinson has delivered over 500 R66s and estimates total fleet hours at over 160,000. In response to customer feedback, the company recently added glass and touchscreen avionics to the helicopter's options list. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. Good news for iPad users. You can now improve your heads-down display with the updated iFlight Planner for iPad version 2.1. Features were added as a direct result of pilot feedback received at Lakeland last month, namely recently issued ATC routes for faster flight planning range rings, extended runway center lines, pages from the FAA's printed airport facility directories, and all new aircraft location icons. The newly released iFlight Planner version 2.1 not only adds features, it also tuned up its existing features. The chart processing software results in higher resolution chart titles and more accurate geo-referencing. An all-new aircraft location icon is designed to increase the visibility of one's location on the map. And at best yet, the new version 2.1 is touted as having more and better features without the need to relearn how the app works. A trial version of iFlight Planner 2.1 is also available. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds and learning proper crosswind landing techniques. Even today, most crosswind landing skills are learned through trial and error, sometimes with disastrous results. Believe it or not, the most common contributing factor in weather-related accidents each year is crosswinds. The second most common factor is wind gusts. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. It teaches pilots the proper techniques to meet and beat these top two causes of weather-related landing accidents. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in challenging crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird flight simulations, the Redbird X-Wind SE, and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com. Welcome back. If you have a story idea for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or podcast, send us an email to news by at aero news.net. Boeing sees its future depending on cockpit and crew training commonality. Boeing's three airplanes currently in development are the future of Boeing commercial airlines. This, according to Scott Fancher, the plane maker's senior vice president for airplane development. Boeing is redesigning the cockpit of the 777X and the 737 MAX as copies of the Dreamliner's cockpit and said it will ask the FAA for common pilot type certification in the 777-300ER, 777X, and the 787. If granted, it would allow pilots to move between the airplanes with as little as five days of additional training. Boeing is also asking the FAA to certify the 777X under an amended type certificate with the existing models of the 777. Jim Haas, Boeing's Director of Product Marketing, 
said the 777X may eventually be rebranded as the 797 and be given a Dreamliner-like name. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Airplane special is because it was built around the gun. You know, it was built sole purpose airplane for close air support, and it does close air support better than any airplane in the world. And that's why it's awesome. Name the airplane that's quiet enough to sneak up on you, has looks that only a mother could love, and is a ground soldier's best friend. It's of course the Republic Thunderbolt II, affectionately known as the Warthog. Search Wartime Warthog on Aero TV's news channel. The NTSB has released a probable cause report from the June 2011 in-flight fire aboard the B-17G Liberty Bell. There were no serious injuries as a result of the incident, but the aircraft was destroyed. According to the report, the weekend before the accident, a fuel leak in the left wing was identified aboard the aircraft. It was repaired, and an inspection the morning of the accident reportedly did not reveal any evidence of a continued fuel leak. However, shortly after takeoff, fumes and smoke appeared in the plane and an accompanying airplane advising that there was visible fire on the left wing. The accident pilot subsequently executed an emergency landing to a cornfield. It appears a failure occurred in the area of the original fuel leak. The NTSB determined the probable cause of this accident to be an inadequate repair of the fuel tank that allowed the fuel leak to continue and ultimately resulted in an in-flight fire. Airborne is brought to you by some of the best sponsors in the aviation business. We'll be right back with more news. ADSB will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADSB today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADSB out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Rebuilding the sport aviation world one aviator at a time. That's ANN's new Aerosports ebook series, your resource guide to the ultimate in aviation adventures. Aerosport will feature the straight skinny on learning and enjoying 16 unique aviation sports, from ultralights and ballooning to aerobatics, gyroplanes and hang gliders to parachuting, home builds and general aviation to RC models. All this and more will be coming soon with the new updatable Aerosport guide for your favorite electronic devices. Get your advance order in now at www. Aero-sport.net. Welcome back. The word from the National Park Service is don't buzz the bears. The Park Service is telling small UAV operators who want to bring their aircraft into Yosemite National Park to leave their aircraft at home. But they don't cite safety issues. The ban is due to noise. Park officials say the number of amateur flown UAVs in the park has increased sharply in recent years, largely brought in by people wanting to get images and videos of climbers and get other views above the treetops in the iconic park. According to the Park Service, the aircraft can be, quote, extremely noisy and can impact the natural soundscape at Yosemite, end quote. So for now, the bottom line is, if you're going to a national park, at least Yosemite, you should leave your drone at home. EAA's Pioneer Airport will be transformed into a fun fly zone on Saturday, June 14th, as up to two dozen ultralights and light aircraft fly to the Grass Airstrip for Ultralight Day 2014. Members of EAA Ultralight Chapters 1 of Southern Wisconsin and 75 of North Central Wisconsin will fly their ultralights and light planes to EAA's Pioneer Airport to show the public what fun flying is all about. Tim Bogenhagen, EAA Ultralight and Light Plane Community Manager, said, quote, This will be a great opportunity for anyone visiting the EAA Museum to see up close and learn more about this fun, affordable segment of aviation. Affordable fun is the core of this kind of flying, end quote. 
Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. And you can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.